I took sabbatical leave, but my ears were every grounded in the current government of Yamira. There is a senator who is sitting senator who I overwhelmingly beat in 2013. He is fortunate that he never faced me in 2017. By design or by default, he became a senator. This senator has been masquerading around, talking of how he's a senior council, which does not pretend to our people. A senior council is a status of the legal fraternity. It's not for the public of Yamira. This senator has never addressed the county government of the county assembly of Yamira as it's required by law. Yamira county assembly is maturely comprised of the ODM wing, where this senator belongs. When the senator fights for revenue allocation to the county of Yamira, the constitution requires that he makes a forum to make addresses yearly to the county assembly and enlighten some or most of our semi literate ignorant MCAs on matters of policy, on how the money is, which has been sent is going to be utilized. I've, this, I've seen this senator running elder skelter in funerals, attacking the MCAs who is supposed to enlighten at the county assembly. I've seen the same senator running around talking to our old mamas, asking them that where is the money going, the money is sent from Nairobi. That kind of incompetency is fatal. The reason more due to public demand, I'm going to eject him on the 9th of August. He has to face me, and I reject him due to public demand because he's incompetent to the hill. He has been attacking lately the governor of Yamira who, resumed, who took office a year ago. Where was this senator four years ago? The said senator had been compromised by the executive then. His air tickets were being paid by the county government. He was picked every time he comes to Yamira from Kisumu by a vehicle whose details I have. Every time he's come to Yamira, he went into bed with the executive. The city governor, who sometimes I talk to on issues of governance, tells me that this state senator has been extorting money from me. And when the governor stays put, he's been running referendum center, attacking the same governor. Two weeks ago, a very fortunate incident happened at Gesima Hospital, where a young mother lost not only her life, but the life of that unborn child. The same incompetent senator wakes up at 2 a.m. that hospital, where two bodies are lying, and they purports to come and redeem or, you know, assist. Where was he when there was no fieco of that for that hospital? The governor is an executive. He's not the MOH of Yamira. He's not, he doesn't, he's not the CCL. He's not the chief officer health. He's not the chair of the counter assembly health. Avenues where this incompetent center could have followed. But I'm telling him that his time has run out. His goose is cooked. His incompetency has been known by all and sundry. For the last four years, I have never seen, I stay in Nairobi, I work in Nairobi, I have never seen anybody summon to the county assembly, I mean to the Senate, for these issues. He only created for Thom kind of petitions where he became a beneficiary. Petitions were done, and I know you are aware, there are one or two petitions which were at the Senate. But he could do adjournments for those certain Senate proceedings, then he could get kickbacks. Secondly, 
the kind of MCAs you're having are so mediocre, they, be, they have been used to cohesing the executive to get big kickbacks. Two years, almost two years ago, the counter assembly collapsed a building of almost 400 million. I saw many officials, you know, from national government, left side and center, running to say that they are working. Two years down the line, I've never seen anybody being summoned either to the Senate, to the DCI, or elsewhere. 400 million went down the drain because of this incompetent senator who is supposed to perform Ms. Laura Seeds required in Article 96-97. You don't oversight in a vacuum. It's just like a parent who takes to a, a child to a secondary school then he drops the child at the gate to tell the watchman to take the child in. Now I'm back. He refers me. The third issue I'm going to address is the issue touching on the passeries from the county government of Nyamira. I speak to the governor when I need some clarity. The governor has told me that the requirements by the MCAs have not been complied to. Three instances. The MCA of Samara Ward gives a list of day students, 100 day students in some schools, which are in existence. When the governor does ground check, they do not exist. The MCA of Muagama Ward gives a list of non existent students and pupils, where the governor tells me did a spot check to ask the children the children over there, whether they can know the names of the children in those classes. They are in existence. The MC of Downish Washed Ward knows that to apply to the executive to make arrangements for the beneficiaries of these parcels, you are supposed to submit two copies, hard copy and soft copy. The fairly educated MCA sends hard copy. He goes to the funeral to castigate the governor. That kind of hypocrisy, incompetency, and idiocy should be out of this count of Yamira. The governor has told me that he has met, I'm not to defend the governor, but I, as a person who is now going to take over as an acting senator until I'm substantially sworn in, I have to follow these issues for the next 60 days. That's why initially I was listening to the ground. Now I'm talking to the ground and walking on the ground. He to, the governor tells me that he has instituted a, com, a committee of accountants who are going to verify this parcel. The reason why I ask our people to be a bit patient, he has said he does not waste money. He has sent accountants to verify the beneficiaries of these parcels in all those schools. And those MCAs who have not complied must comply to the requirements of those parcels. Secondly, I'm going to address the issue which has been going around about the ACD teachers. I was away and I, when I heard about the new, the county government that started dealing with the ACD cases, I had cries from all over the county. I spoke to the governor to verify this before I make my other st steps. The governor tells me those who are constitutionally reachable to be employed will be employed. Those people who hail from Jamira County and have been working in the county government, but technically by virtue of age, they are failed. They are going to be put into, into a system of contracts to work because he knows their mothers, their fathers, they are, they are our people. So that must be clarified as per the information I got from the awesome mouth, not hearsay.